Hey, and welcome back to another one of our hacking streams here, where we're currently working with a Vision 5.2 single board computer. And let's actually quickly switch over to something we spoke about just uh, a week ago and have a look at what happened. So uh, first up, we were talking about the KXAC mechanism and I had backported that to the development branch in the Linux fork at Store 5. So uh, here we have the uh, pull request that I filed um, where you see it's essentially 27 commits, which I really had just cherry picked. And I left a note with instructions on how to actually uh, leverage this now. So uh, the thing is, uh, with this patch set here, uh, you could already now do something like taking the original vendor code for DRAM in it, then switch over to OpenSBI, and within OpenSBI, start working uh, with Linux boot here. You would just need to have something to uh, write that to the flash part on the board. So you could either use uh, some existing tool, which is working over uh, the file transfer for, uh, via X modem that we have, but that is very, very slow. So you may want to use a programmer instead. And well, you would need to rework a few things maybe. Um, somebody has actually started that. Uh, I will uh, put a note here in the notes later on. But yeah, let's uh, not get too much into that. So yeah, we don't have something um, like fully working end to end yet, but it's like uh, almost there. Anyway, so yeah, I contacted Star5 and um, gave them a hint on this pull request here. So yeah, they can also look at that. Um, now, in the meantime, something happened and they made another release here. And let's have a quick look at that as well. So uh, we're not looking at the Linux repository here now, but instead the Vision 5.2 repository and especially the releases. So there is a release now, as you can see, it's uh, 2.11.5, that is the version number. But when is it from? It just says last week here. It's not a specific timestamp. Um, anyway, that was right around the time we actually uh, did our experiments here. And what they did was, well, they now also put the PCI Express driver in the U-Boot source code. So you can already uh, boot from PCI Express now, I guess, in U-Boot already. Um, so I could download uh, an upgrade to that firmware here. However, uh, we're not uh, going to look further into that right now. I just want to have another look at the Linux PCI E code again, uh, because we just sort of roughly talked about that last time. And I was saying that, well, you could look at the driver and you would find a bunch of hard coded values in there uh, with respect to, you know, the flexibility that is actually offered by uh, the vendor who made the controller. And you may remember there was this GUI interface where you could click and, uh, you know, have a lot of settings. So when they uh, did their uh, implementation for the JH7110 SOC, that is the one on the board here, they uh, chose to go with a certain configuration at star five. And so, yeah, those values are now coded into Linux. Um, but there is another thing I want to look at with you today. Uh, and that is here in my last pane. So I'm looking at the driver here. So this year is the PCI Express driver in Linux, uh, which is not yet upstream, but it's in the fork. And this function here is the most interesting one to start with. And if you have looked into Linux or U-Boot or drivers in general, uh, you may know that there is uh, this pattern of having a function which is called something probe, which is probing for the device. It's checking whether the device is, uh, the device is there. It's bringing up the device and initializing a bunch of things. And let's have a look at that here. So first up, the first part of the code is actually very much just fetching information from another source. And this year in particular, uh, this one and that one, those are the addresses where, uh, you know, the specific uh, parts that belong to this controller are in memory and that is configured in a device tree. So if you look at the corresponding device tree source, you will find the matching base addresses. They're just obtained in a slightly uh, different manner. So you see this function here, dev read adder index. Well, that is just reading uh, this value from the device tree. That, that's really all it means. Now, a few other things here. Uh, there is reset get by name, 
uh, again, this is looking at the device tree. And this is also something you will see occur over and over in drivers. There is this one here, OSC uh, for the oscillator, APB, I think for the advanced peripheral bus, XE for the XE bus. So those are the specifics now regarding this part, but it's always like there is some bus, everything is connected to, uh, there are reset pins and stuff like that. And all of those need to be instrumented here. Now it also looks at uh, how the uh, part is configured. So there are different uh, different frequencies for the DDR part. Um, it's also reading that from, I think that was set up a bit earlier. Uh, it's also reading that from uh, some structure here. So this thing called priv, um, that is really just the structure uh, containing all the information here at this point. So yeah, if you look at this here, this is also all just saying priv, priv something. So yeah, uh, priv, oh, the FRE, the clock frequency. We actually obtained that here from the device tree. So yeah, now at this point here, uh, we're checking if that is actually a known value that we have in the device tree. So it has to be either 2133, I think that's in megahertz, or 2800. Um, and then depending on that, they would uh, choose a certain rate. And then if you look further through the uh, code in here, you will see those two values, uh, or well, uh, the one that is selected is actually being applied somewhere. Um, now it says DDR frequency, but why does it say DDR frequency? Well, uh, that is a good question. It might be that the PCIe bus is really just uh, related to DDR at some point. I I'm not sure. Maybe they're sharing a clock or something. That could be. So we will also look at the uh, DDR code in a bit again, so the DRAM code, and we may see something very similar. Now you see there are some things here. Um, yeah, here we have uh, another hard-coded value again. This is a register address. It's currently commented out, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure actually what is behind that anyway. Um, but yeah, so if you, if you keep reading on, uh, you, you see a bunch of these here. Setting registers here, uh, setting the clock rate or a PLL or something like that. So this here would be one of the uh, PLLs. Then these asserts and deasserts for you know, the oscillator, APB, and XE, and then the setup here. Um, I might be, con oh, I, I see what's going on. I'm, I'm very sorry. Huh. We are actually looking at the DDR code now. Now that explains why it's all about DDR. I'm sorry. Uh, let's switch back. I, I really just looked at the wrong window. So we wanted to look at this here. Um, let's, let's reset to like five minutes ago and start over. Okay, so anyway, again, uh, here you see the pattern now. So we have a probe function again. This is probing for the PCI Express bus now. And so let's walk through this one here very quick. And maybe we can have the thing that we just saw in mind already. So um, if, if you look at this here, let's just ignore this part here. It's just allocating some memory. Uh, you, you see something very similar. So first of all, we have a struct that we're working with here all the time. Here it's not called priv, it's called PCIe, but whatever. It's obtaining values from the device tree. So here it's saying PCIe parse DT, well, with PLDA before it, whatever. That is fetching a value again. Then it's passing on that value to some other function. Uh, similarly, we're doing uh, this here, pin control in it. So this here is now uh, also passing on some information. Uh, we can see if that function is in here. It is. And you see it's doing a, a bunch of things here. So this here is a reset pin, for example. I think there is like default and active. I'm, I'm not sure what those are really, to be honest. So yeah, you would need to have uh, really good expertise in order to understand the stuff here. Um, However, if you uh, w look through the code here, uh, in other functions, there is actually quite some comments in there, uh, which can give you a rough understanding. So if you know, like, I'm, I'm not sure if it's something specific now to PCI Express or to the vendor here that provided the part. Um, but I guess if, if you are very t uh, deep into that domain, you will uh, get a clearer understanding. So yeah, again, there, there is a bunch of registers uh, being configured here. So this update bits function that you see here on the right, 
I actually opened that up because I didn't know about those functions. They are provided by Linux as helper functions for drivers because there are certain patterns that you would need to do over and over, like, you know, setting just very specific bits and so on. So in that sense, you would pass a register, uh, you, you would pass something else. I'm not sure what that is. You would have a mask, you would have a value. Um, and so if we, I, I guess this is like probably base address and offset. That's just my guess here. Now, if we look for this function here on the left, uh, this here is now the syscon h file. So this is just the header file declaring the functions. Um, we don't actually have that in here. Oh, yeah, I I'm sorry. I actually opened this one here for the other functions. So these are like syscon something. Yeah, you 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 was oh, I just uh, skimmed a bit through the files and you was uh, you will see there is uh, a lot of these syscon functions also being used. Yeah, that one for example that you see here, it, it's declared here on the left. So yeah, uh, this here is for uh, getting values from the device tree. Um, yeah, let's let's switch back to where we were uh, the probing. And yeah, as you can see here, it's it's really a bunch of code. Uh, HW init something. Yeah, it's, it's really just doing a, a lot of things. But yeah, as you can see here, for example, there are actually quite some comments. Um, probe. There we go. All right. So this here is essentially like the entry point, and then if you walk through this, you see there are a lot of uh, a lot of other functions being called, um, like this one here, for example. We just talked about that very briefly. It's used in a few places. Uh, it might even be from a different place. Yeah, it could be that that is like a common function in Linux, for example. Um, yeah, set DRV data, DRV. Usually DRV is for like drive, I would guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what it's for. Anyway, yeah, here, here you see this function being called that is also a larger function again, that one. So if we jump to this, it's, it's a bit longer, not too long. Uh, yeah, similarly here, it's like moderate length functions, I would say. Yeah, so you, you see a bunch of these. Uh, one of the last ones being hardware init, so this year, is, is a bit more extensive. Again, it's writing to a lot of registers. And this is where we saw a bunch of these comments here. Well, and when it's done, eventually, uh, it's just going to return. So uh, this year, if, if there is an error, it would do some cleanup again. But otherwise, you know, it, it would just return. And well, now the question is, how does that actually work? So uh, when you write a driver in Linux or you would or something, it's actually like that in many systems, um, you would declare uh, your driver in a way. So here you see the metadata for the module. Um, and then you hear, here you have this function. This function is registering the driver for the Linux kernel. So this function here, module platform driver, that is something also provided by Linux. And here it's passing on something. And this something here, well, that is a certain struct, and this is the platform driver struct, also something coming from Linux. And this is where it's passing on all the functions that are declared in here, or well, the necessary ones. So there's the probe function, the remove function. And then there is another struct, which is just called driver, where, you know, we have like uh, a name, we have this here, uh, the match table for the device tree. So OF, if you remember, comes from open firmware, which uh, declared the or uh, you know came up with a device tree standard for declaring the uh, hardware information, and uh, well, then we have this here PM. I guess this is for like power management. So if like some component in the system is not in use, it you know can be powered off or something or put into suspend. Anyway, so yeah, that was a very uh, rough uh, look at the driver again. Now slightly deeper. Um, to be honest, it's, it's really also beyond my knowledge. So yeah, we, I, I can't provide you with much more information here. But if anybody has something interesting to say, uh, maybe drop some comments here, like below the video. Okay, so uh, now let's get back to uh, the DRAM drivers again and look at this here. 
So yeah, we, we already accidentally looked at this. Um, so yeah, again, this is a probe function. And now that we know how drivers work, uh, let's actually jump down here. Uh, where in a very similar fashion to what we just saw for Linux, a driver is being registered for uBoot. So they have this function, uBoot driver. And then here again, you have a name. Now for this year, uh, you have OF match, like for matching a device tree entry again, open firmware match. Uh, there is this thing here, which is saying, uh, you know, which entries in the device tree would be matching. That is defined by these uh, compatibility strings. So you say compatible, you can have a bunch of these here. Well, and the probe function, of course, also has to be in here. Uh, there it is. Uh, and a few other things. I'm not sure what ops is. Uh, well, I, guess, I guess this year perif auto is for like, maybe for allocating memory or something. Anyway, so back to our probing function here. Um, I want to look a bit uh, deeper into the code now because I already prepared a few things uh, during the last days and weeks. So yeah, that is something we haven't talked about here yet uh, because it's essentially uh, a bit to figure out in the first place. So now the first meaningful uh, bits that are happening here again is just setting some registers, setting PLLs, uh, again registers, doing this assert, deassert and so on. Uh, these are functions that we can just translate one to one and the, they are actually very, very simple. Um, so yeah, the, these are really just setting a few simple values. You just need to dive down into uh, what this means now. So you need to look at this RST axi thing, for example, you would need to look at the device tree, uh, how it is defined and so on. So yeah, these are really just platform registers. Um, I, I think actually, uh, already have some of those defined. Anyway, now comes the most interesting part. And that is this function here, uh, star five DDR setup. So as you can see, after that, it's really just, you know, doing cleanup on error and otherwise returning. So let's look at that function now. And now we will see a, a few more things being called. So this year, uh, this is just reading some size information. Again, it's not too uh, interesting at this point, it's only uh, important for two function calls here. So those here depend on the size. Um, we can just hard code the size for our case for a start. So uh, my board here, I think has two or four gigabytes of memory. Um, I would actually need to check again because I don't know uh, right now. Uh, I, I can just look at a log file or something. Anyway, so yeah, these functions here, those are the interesting functions. Now there is a train function, a util function and a start function, then some register being set again. And then there is something called being boot. And I'm not sure if that's like, I, I, I'm getting the impression that we're actually um, passing a certain, like a small program to the DDR controller, and then at some point running it. I'm not sure if that is really the case. If somebody knows how this stuff works, please let me know. Otherwise, you know, we, we just keep translating one to one. And I would just like to grab one simple example here. Oh, hey, investing. Oh, yeah, uh, offering promotions and spam, of course. Thank you. I was hoping something interesting would be happening here. Okay, and with that back to the code. So uh, there is this file here, uh, DDR5 utils. Uh, that is in the DRAM driver here. And if we look at this, it's actually a very, very simple function. So it's just doing an iteration over a bunch of values, which are defined up there. And well, then it's just writing them out. So out LE32, that is just really writing a 32 bit to a given register. And well, it's just really doing this sequentially. So we get this here, it's called FireRack. So this is like, the starting address, so the first address that we write to, and you know, then depending on the index here in our for loop, the i here or there, we would just write to that register defined by the i, and well, we would just write the value which is and uh, at that index up here in this very very long thing, uh, which we will also have a very quick look at. Um, there's just one thing which is a bit interesting, so. First, it's writing everything from like the 
second value uh, and then to the end. And then it's actually writing the first 1,792 values. I don't know why that is the case. I guess it just has to be that way. Yeah, yeah. Without documentation on the part, it's really hard to tell. Anyway. So yeah, let's actually have a look at this here now. And so if you scroll up, you would just see there is tons of values, many zeros in between actually. Uh, so yeah, that could actually be simplified a lot. And I would just scroll up to the very top here and you can see there is actually nothing else in here. It's just a giant chunk of data, which is just, you know, raw bytes and uh, that's it. So yeah, sorry about that. I, I think that happened through clicking. So I, I can use the middle mouse button here in Vim to paste something. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is the DDRFI util function that we just looked at. That is the second function being looked here. The train function is very similar. It's just only a, a single one of those things here. Um, then we have the start function. And the start function, again, is a bit more uh, complex. So if we look at that, uh, first of all, we will see the struct and we already looked at that. Um, two video streams back. And when we looked at that, we saw, well, uh, this is actually also simply following the same pattern that we uh, uh, we also just saw for Linux. Um, so instead of just writing a 32-bit value here, it's using this here. I think this is like the index of the register. This is a mask to be applied, and then this is the value to be written. And now we, we have these here, and these are certain flags, so they also call it flags in here, and they determine how exactly to use those here. So there is one flag which is called offset cell, and offset cell, or select, I guess, is saying whether this here is added to one base address or another, which is interesting. And then this here, I think, is the behavior like how to treat the mask and so on. Um, I, I need to be careful with the mouse wheel here. Anyway, um, if we just, it really happens a lot. So if we just scroll further down, and let me just do that here, um, you see there is now just a few small functions. Again, these are a bit larger, but whatever. So one again is looking at the size, and depending on the size, it's saying uh, DDR rec set, so that is the function that we just looked at uh, above here. This one, uh, we, ju we just skipped past it. Um, that one is being called with a file reg, a, a start CFG, a length, and a mask. And this start CFG here, well, that is just the very lengthy thing with the lots of values that we looked at. So if we, uh, yeah, just follow through, it's right here. Now, file reg is something that we get passed over again. So here uh, in this instance, um, I think it's just the base address of the file. We can have a look at that again later. So it's really what is just being passed here. Um, yeah, the, the size is also being passed. I'm actually not sure why this is like, it, it's being processed a few times. So it looks a bit odd. Anyway, so yeah, it's like, depending on the size, it's it's a given mass. So if we do this in Rust, it actually looks a lot simpler. Um, I mean, be besides the fact that we can just hard code the value for our current size here. Um, otherwise, we, you know, we would need to parameterize uh, our setup at some point. Um, yeah, we, we would just use a match statement here, uh, or, you know, just declare a map and then, you know, pick something from the map. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the way they wrote it here. It's okay. It's nothing too crucial. Anyway, this here is something very, very important. We must not overlook. So it's writing to the phi reg base register, just the value one. I guess this is something like, I don't know, reset or, you know, turn it on or something like that. So yeah, this is something um, we, we must not overlook. Yeah, and otherwise here, uh, let's look at this DDR rec set function here. Um, again, this is just doing some iteration, right? So it's getting uh, this, where is it? There. So it, it's, oh, hang on. So we are passing file rec. Okay, so this rec here, this is still the base register, and we're passing on the data. Um, 
which is also a bit interesting because it's exactly the data that is also defined above. So yeah, we, we could actually omit all of this here and also omit passing it on here, oh, whatever. So there is land and there is mask. And so how is that being used? So first of all, uh, let's look at this here and talk about this offset cell thing again very quickly. So depending on offset cell, it would either add to the base register, this thing here, phi AC base adder, or just phi base adder. I don't know what this AC here means, no idea. Um, it is just what they call one of the base registers. And we can actually look at that. So we can, oh look, I just grabbed for that a while ago. So we can see it is defined to be hex 1000. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know. We, we just need to define that value also in our code. It's, it's just being added to rack here. Well, and uh, then whatever register uh, we have here. So adder is then the address of the register. Like it's, it's really just uh, this thing here. Um, it is then being written to in either this or that branch. And that again, how that is used depends on this clear set uh, flag. So I guess clear set means just clear out the full, uh, just clear out the register and just overwrite it uh, completely. Um, yeah, there's this your DDR rec trigger. I don't even know where that is coming from again. Yeah, it might also be something they only have in here. Uh, let's, let's have a look. RG. Yeah, let's look with some context. Oh, look, it's a function defined here in the header. So, okay. It's used exactly in two places and it's some weird macro. So it's, it's reading from the register, applying the mask and then oring the value. There is actually already existing helper function. I'm not sure why they are doing it here in this way. Yeah. I may need to take a closer look again because it looks to me like something very straightforward and simple. Anyway, uh, yeah, here at this point, it's just writing out a value and here it's, well, reading the register first here and then adding this value. That is also very interesting. So there is clear set, set and doing this here. So this is like increasing the value that is being read here. It's interesting. I'm not sure why that would be necessary, but yeah, I, I guess they just know. We can actually look at uh, where this would apply. So we can, we can look at this here, for example. So for this here, we would be adding this value to this register and It's a good question why this mask here is even declared. So yeah, I don't really see why that would be used here. Yeah, maybe maybe things would just uh, clear up a bit if we um, if we just continue translating and then we see it in our code. So yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, with a brief look at that again, um, this here is an even more complex function to look at. I uh, also started with that. Um, but let's now look at the Rust code that we already have. And this is something I had just prepared like some weeks back, started and, you know, just added a bunch uh, of things to. And so we have this file here on the right. We have this file here on the left. This is the main function. And I just commented out the call to DRAM in it. So yeah, our main function here, um, doesn't even really matter too much right now. So we could just uh, comment that in again, but it's it's currently not really working because it's not fully implemented yet. Um, and I think I still have some errors, so some things to still figure out. Uh, now there is the init file and in the init file, I'm declaring a bunch of constants. So this here is the 
uh, DDR control register base. Uh, that is this address. We also find that in the data sheet and I confirmed that with the device tree in U-boot. There is this here, SEC control base. Could be secondary control actually. I'm not, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's uh, off by a certain value, hex 1000. Now there is the phi base and for the phi we have something called AC base. And the other thing, I actually don't really know what it is. I just put CTRL in here for control, but I'm really not sure what it really means. So yeah, I, I just know these are both being added to the DDR5 base register address, which is this one here. Yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing. Um, those two here, uh, I, I'm just currently uh, leaving them here for, you know, just for reference. They're not really being used. Uh, because I translated the code that would calculate the value to write for each given frequency and so on, um, which is on the right hand side here. Uh, so, the, you know, the, there are a few different values that you need to write to a certain register and then there is like certain ranges of bits where you need to put those values. Yeah, I just put that here. Um, very much hard coded. So it's sort of the same as the vendor code, except that you know, it's a bit simpler. Um, so this would be one of the uh, one of the values to write. Actually, this is sort of like the value and the value is really a struct and then you would need to, you know, stitch together uh, the values in the struct and uh, well, <laughs> then you need to write to a few different registers actually because some belong in one register and some in another. Um, you would need to have some masks for that. So I put the masks in here. And then here is the function. So as you can see, it's work in progress. There is a to do here. Um, uh, this is just copied over from the U-boot code. And well, what do we need to do? Uh, just as often enough, we would need to read a value and then write back, uh, you know, just an updated value. So the original value again, uh, that is this here. And then we apply something here at this point, it's this year, PLLPD OFF. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, this year is like turning something off. Here it's turning it back on again. And here in between, you would need to set the values. That is how it works. Right. So yeah, it's, it's been a few weeks since I uh, started that. Now this year, uh, you can see there is uh, a few changes that I just made here. This is our init function. You can very much map that to the probe function, except that I'm trying to keep things a bit more uh, compact and, you know, um, a, a bit less to jump around if you were to follow, let's say. So yeah, uh, th there are these few things here. Um, some initial uh, some initial values that need to be written to those registers here. Uh, this here, uh, clock U0 DDR bus register, for example. I also just copied that over um, this here is where we set the frequency. So yeah, we're just using this one. It's the same one that is also uh, in the device tree or actually derived from that. So this is the struct that we just looked at. Um, then we need to write this thing here. Then we would need to do all the asserts and deasserts that we also just looked at. So just for re uh, refreshment, it was jump back this year. And now I took this function, the DDR setup function, uh, which is calling all the other functions again. And well, I just put that here. So yeah, I don't really see the point in having those here in a separate function. You could do that, but yeah, it's, it's, it's still like the most high level function than calling into all the others. So if we look at this here now, the translation of the train function, then we would see well, it is the very same thing as uh, in the other case. So up here, we have our lots of hard coded values. I just copied that over and did a few formatting alignments, but not too much. Um, you, you can very clearly see there is some structures in here. I'm not exactly sure what the structure is, but you know, I was starting to see patterns like this here, for example, looked very interesting. Um, yeah, this looks like a certain uh, a table or something, right? So yeah, that could really be code actually. Then we have this here, um, which is even more 
uh, and then all of that is just uh, being passed uh, on by these functions here. So we're just iterating and then writing to registers. And as you can see, I actually have that file open twice. So yeah, um, back to this here. Now we have this util function. The util function, uh, well, we, we actually just looked at both of them. So yeah, it was the same thing uh, in the same file. I just put them both in the same file because why, you know, have so many different files? Because they're ex essentially, it's always the same thing. You have a very large clunk of data and then you're just writing the data, right? So this here is actually like the glue for putting the values where they belong. Now the phi sort, I haven't started translating that yet. Uh, that would need to do uh, to be something we need to do here. It's also just comment for now. And then we have this here, the uh, DDR CSR boot function. I'm still not sure what CSR means. Anyway, here we go. This is the uh, boot function. Well, and currently it's also not doing much. It's uh, what I said, it's the more complex function and it's doing this stuff here. Uh, CSR set, it's the same file up there. Um, and CSR set again is iterating over these sorts of struct and then just writing them out to uh, the respective re uh, registers. So yeah, um, with all of that in mind, um, let's have a quick look again of where we are. So I'm just going to run our uh, code that we have so far again. So I just turned on the board and now I'm transferring the code. And well, as you can see, we just have this here at the moment and I'm just turning it uh, off again. So yeah, what, what do we have so far? We're printing or boot. Uh, we're printing the boot mode. So this is currently booted over the UART. Uh, some information on the vendor and the platform. Well, and then I'm dumping uh, what the current configuration is for the DDR controller and the PHY. As you can see, you know, on, on reset, it's mostly just empty. So you can probably just, um, if, you, if you just walk through uh, everything else, which is behind there, uh, you see it's it's really just a very small excerpt. Then you would probably find that there is a bunch more uh, that is already preset to some certain values, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know actually. Um, so in that sense, it might not even be necessary to, you know, read and update registers. But yeah, we will see it uh, at some point. Anyway, so yeah, that is where we're at. Uh, I just wanted to give you this uh, update today and we will look in, uh, more into detail again when, you know, I actually made some progress again with the DRAM in it. So as you could see, it's really no magic in there, except that we don't really know how the part really behaves and we don't have any documentation. But regarding the code, there is no much magic. It's really just writing lots of values to lots of registers that we don't really know. And um, yeah, with that, uh, thank you a lot again for listening in. Uh, if you have any questions on this, please feel free to uh, post them in the comments on YouTube. So yeah, this year will be up in a bit. And um, yeah, until next time, take care and goodbye.